Number 10 is Bacalar. Bacalar Lagoon, also known as the Lagoon of Seven Colors, is one of the most beautiful places I've been to in all of Mexico. Bacalar is located on the Yucatan Peninsula, a few hours driving south of Cancun. This isn't a place where you're going to come to party, but it is the perfect place for a healthy, relaxing nature retreat. While in Bacalar, you can learn some of the history of the town while visiting the 300-year-old fort from which you'll have awesome views of the lagoon. I also recommend going out on the water. You can do so by renting kayaks, paddle boards, or by taking a sailboat tour. In the town, there are no shortage of places to grab a fresh juice or smoothie, and you'll notice that a lot of the restaurants are themed around healthy cuisine. But don't think that means it's not tasty. One of the most memorable meals of my life was had at the restaurant Niche Tamal. I highly recommend that you check it out. Number nine is Mexico City. If you want a place where you'll never run out of interesting things to see and do, Mexico City, or Ciudad de Mexico as it's known here, could be the perfect option for you. If you want a unique party atmosphere, I recommend that you visit visit the floating gardens of Xochimilco where a guide will take you out on a colorful raft called a trajinera as you float around the canals drinking beers and dancing to the loud music. Next you can visit the enormous ancient pyramids at Teotihuacan or the gorgeous Palacio de Bellas Artes. In Mexico City you'll also find countless museums such as Museo Sumaya which is free to enter and features more than 50,000 items including famous artwork, gold coins, intricately carved ivory, priceless artifacts, and much more. Oh and by by the way, the food in Mexico City is nothing short of incredible. Number eight is Isla Mujeres. Located just a short ferry ride from Cancun, Isla Mujeres, or the Island of Women as it translates to English, has one of the most beautiful beaches in all of Mexico. It's very easy to get to, but at the same time, it offers a nice change of pace from the Cancun hotel zone. While at Isla Mujeres, I recommend taking a catamaran tour where you'll probably do some snorkeling at the underwater museum. You'll also have access to unlimited booze while you cruise around the calm waters of the island for a few hours. I've done these catamaran tours a few times and they're always a lot of fun. While at Isla Mujeres, I also recommend that you rent a golf cart at least one of the days that you're there so you can explore the island at your own pace and cruising around the island on a golf cart is a ton of fun as well. For number six, seven, we're heading over to the west coast of the city of Puerto Vallarta, which is a gorgeous beach destination with the best sunsets I've ever seen in my life. One thing I really like about the city is that it's built next to these lush green hills, which makes for great views in every direction, regardless of whether you're facing the mountains or the water. Something cool about Puerto Vallarta, or PV as many of the foreigners call it, is that you don't even have to be staying oceanfront to have great views of the water, because many of the homes are built on the hills around the city, and thanks to those hills, almost everyone has has amazing views. PV gets visitors from all walks of life, but it has become especially popular with gay males. Throughout the city and concentrated in the romantic zone, you'll find many places that cater to the gay crowd. PV is an awesome place to visit if you're a nature lover like me because you have the gorgeous waters and pretty beaches and amazing sunsets, but you also have great hiking as well. Number six is Puerto Escondido. This is the quintessential beach town located on the Oaxacan coast. The beaches here are amazing, and because you're on the west coast, you also get the sunsets over the water. If you're into surfing, this is the place to be. It is a world-renowned surfing destination that hosts a major surfing competition every year. Something else that's great about Puerto Escondido is the food. You, of course, have great seafood since you're right by the water, but you're also in the Mexican state of Oaxaca, which is well known for its amazing food. Number five is Isla Holbosch. This is perhaps the least well-known on this list. Holbosch is this pretty little island on the Yucatan Peninsula. It boasts incredibly clear waters and something that's really unique about it is how gradually sloped the beaches are. So you can wade really far out before the water even comes up to your knees. While you're at Isla Hobosh, you can take a boat ride to see the whale sharks. You can see the incredible sunsets from Punta Cocos. You can go visit the flamingos that call the island home, or you can go see the incredible bioluminescence at night. This is probably the most difficult place to get to on this list because you have to first fly to Cancun, and then you have to wait for your transportation that will take you to the little town of Chiquila. There you might have to wait for another 30 minutes while you wait for another ferry to to arrive, and finally, it will take you to the island. After you land in Cancun, it can easily be another four hours before you get to your hotel. However, it is gorgeous, and if you go, I highly recommend that you rent a golf cart to explore the island because that's going to improve your experience a lot. Number four is probably the most hyped up place on this entire list, but I still think it's worth a visit. Tulum is located about two hours south of Cancun. This town has some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. It's home to the Mayans, so there's some ancient ruins that you can visit, such as the Tulum Archaeological 
site that's just outside of town. This place is really neat because it sits next to the ocean, so you have amazing views as you're exploring the ruins. But my favorite ruins are actually located at Koba, a little less than an hour away. Here you can rent bikes and ride them through the jungle as you explore the many different pyramids there. There are kind of two sides to Tulum. You have the super expensive hotel zone where all the Instagrammers go, and then you have the much more affordable town side. I really love the town side because you can still visit the beach, but at the same time, your vacation will be so much cheaper and you can experience all the awesome bars and restaurants that the town has to offer. And while you're in the area, I highly recommend that you visit at least one cenote. If you're not familiar with cenotes, they're these really pretty freshwater underground watering holes that are definitely worth a visit. Number three is one of my favorite places featured in this video, but it's one that a lot of people are scared to visit. Acapulco is located in southwestern Mexico and it has so much to offer. First of all, it's easy to get to. You just fly into the Acapulco airport and boom, you're there. Next, it's truly a gorgeous place. You can go have breakfast next to the beach in Acapulco Bay, and then you can go up to the top of the cliff at Hotel Los Flamingos and enjoy a Coco Loco as you watch the whales pass by. If you don't know what a Coco Loco is, it's where they take a coconut and add some liquor to the coconut water. They're super tasty. Next, you can watch the incredibly talented cliff divers do their thing as they dive into treacherous waters from more than 100 feet in the air. There are so many cool things to see and do in Acapulco, plus it's not too expensive, so I highly recommend it. For number two, we are going inland to Oaxaca City. Located in the Mexican state by the same name, Oaxaca is the food and culture capital of Mexico. The nearby archaeological site of Monte Alban dates back nearly 200 years, but the city as we know it today was founded in the 1400s. In Oaxaca, you'll find street after street of well-preserved facades that are hundreds of years old. Hardly a day goes by in Oaxaca where there isn't some kind of parade or celebration happening in the streets of the city center. If you love dance and culture and loud music and bright colors, Oaxaca City is hard to beat. My personal favorite thing about Oaxaca is the food. I love Mexican food in general, but Oaxacan food is my absolute favorite. I cannot even describe to you how amazing the food is in this city. And for number one, we are going to head over to the Pacific Coast where you'll find one of my favorite cities in all of Mexico. This is a relatively affordable city, especially considering it's a really pretty beach destination. Here you'll find some of the best seafood I've had in the entire country, amazing sunsets over the water, and in addition to that, the people here are incredible. I've traveled all over the country and nowhere have people been as welcoming as they are in Mazatlan. Something I love about Mazatlan versus some of the other other popular Mexico beach destinations is that you don't have to put up with a bunch of scammers and hustlers in this city. For example, when you fly into the Mazatlan airport, you feel welcomed and you don't have to run the gauntlet like you do in Cancun. I also love that you can take a stroll or a bike ride on the longest boardwalk in all of Mexico while you enjoy the beautiful views, or you can take a hike up to the lighthouse where you have incredible views as well. And you get all of this for about one third the price of a Cancun vacation. All things considered, in terms of the prices you pay compared to what you get, it is really difficult to beat Mazatlan as a Mexico vacation destination. Next, watch this video on the reasons why to visit Mazatlan instead of Cancun.